Hello and thanks for watching the top 10 high school football plays from week six. He's J.C. Carnahan and I'm Charles King. Looks like for the second week in a row, the passing game is front and center on the countdown. Yeah, let's get us started with some of those plays at number 10, J.C. Let's look at some big catches you might have missed last week. First, it's Jordan Weber of Orlando Christian Prep going up over the back of a Jordan Christian Prep defender for a 36-yard TD. OCP goes on to win 44-zip. Now check out David Troutman of Orlando University leaping for the 26-yard reception in a 30-16 boot game win over Colonial. Lake Mary's Aaron Edwards made some big plays Friday. Here's one of Edwards coming back for the Charlie Peterson pass for a 22-yard gain, but Oviedo wins 45-34. Finally, Hunter Weissmore of St. Cloud throws it up for Johnny Fritz, who makes sure it's not picked off for a 42-yard reception in a 34-27 win over Celebration. I like how he pops up at the end. I got it. Seminole with the ball against Lake Brantley here at number nine. Quarterback Kalen Wiggins doesn't see anything downfield he likes, so he tucks and runs. A pair of Patriots cut off his path on the sideline, but Wiggins slices between them like a knife and leaves carnage in his wake. Still some work left, but he finds the end zone for a 40-yard score, and we've got more from this game coming up. More from the passing game at number eight. That's Trinity Prep's Jared Heron throwing over the middle to Ike Evans, who makes the catch despite the effort from the defender and goes 67 yards for the TD in the Saints' 44-7 win over Father Lopez. Then Colonial's Kendall Williams skips a pass to Ramon Gordon, who gets the green light to take it 84 yards to pay dirt. Watch again to see the lucky bounce land in the hands of Flash Gordon before he takes off. If you watch the top 10 regularly, you might remember Trinity Prep's Chris Kao had back-to-back -back number one plays to start the year. Well, he returns to the countdown, blocking a Father Lopez punt. And now watch this. Kyle Nimick gets the easiest loose ball ever and runs it in for a touchdown. JC mentioned the Saints won. They are now 4-1 and one on the season. Kao making big plays. What if I told you we've got a kicker coming in at number six? What if I told you he hits a 54-yard field goal? Oh my goodness, but wait, Jacob Godek also hit one from 57 yards for Lake Brantley that ties for second longest field goal in area history. More great catches at number five, and we begin at Timber Creek. Wolves taking on Winter Park. Preston Samodin's pass to the end zone appears to get picked off, but Shane Hooks ends up with it for a touchdown for Timber Creek. You see what happens when we slow it down. It's not easy to see on the wide angle, but Hooks with a big catch and a big district win for Timber Creek in this one. East River picked up its first win of the year, thanks in part to a big game by Alejandro Hendricks, and this was his best play of the game. Similar to the Hooks catch, the ball goes off the defender's fingertips, and Hendricks secures it just before it hits the turf. Falcons top Liberty 23-14. Gateway's Henry Miller makes some things happen here at number four. Watch as he gets by one defender, shakes off another defender, and cuts back just to do it all over again. Miller finally gets out to the open field just in time to get some blocks downfield to finish off the 81-yard touchdown. Gateway beats George Jenkins 2014. Top 10 regular Tyreek Tisdale is at it again, JC. The Oak Ridge senior makes the catch, avoids a DP defender, and now watch this. What? <laughs> I'm going to watch this at least two or three times here. Tisdale completely hurdles this guy and then he takes it down the sideline for an 80-yard touchdown for Oak Ridge. Unfortunately for Oak Ridge, it was the Pioneers' only score in a 34-7 loss to Dr. Phillips. I'm sure Lake Mineola would have preferred the win this week, but Brendan McCoy did all he could for the Hawks as he lays out to make the one-handed grab in the end zone for a Hawks touchdown. Unbelievable stuff right there. Solid athleticism. Yeah, Lake Mineola may have lost Friday, but the Hawks get the consolation prize of having our top two plays this week. At number one, it's Fred Jackson. He's juking, bobbing, weaving, and absolutely carving up Eastridge's defense on this 41-yard touchdown run. I think all 11 defenders had a chance at him, and I counted. At least six guys actually get a hand on him on this run, but Jackson would not be denied. Now, Charles, you've been doing the top 10 plays for about six years now. 
This is the first time that a team has had the top two plays in one week. Yeah, we had a lot of firsts this year. KO with the number one play in consecutive weeks, and now Lake Mineola with the number one and number two plays in this week's countdown. Those boys at Lake Mineola seem to be in the top ten every week. Thanks for watching the top ten plays of week six, and we'll see you next week with the top ten plays of week seven.